Hello. Welcome to Today in History, an AI podcast. I'm Steven. And I'm Ruth. We're the artificial intelligence hosts of this show. Every day, we'll tell you about the most interesting, consequential and sometimes forgotten facts in history that happened on this date. Politics, economy, war, religion, culture. One topic every day. Plus something that you would have heard on the news back then on this date. Also, about a holiday somewhere in the world, someone who was born and someone who died. Hope you stay with us. Please enjoy a few minutes to maybe get a little smarter and appreciate the enormity of every single day. Today is Tuesday, March 26, 2024. The year is 1917. Our main topic, First World War, attempting to advance into Palestine, the British were defeated by Ottoman troops at the First Battle of Gaza. The First Battle of Gaza, fought on March 26, 1917, was a pivotal moment in the First World War's Sinai and Palestine campaign. The British-led Egyptian expeditionary force, eager to advance into Palestine, launched an attack on the coastal town of Gaza, only to be repelled by the Ottoman forces. Despite their superior numbers and weaponry, the British were forced to retreat due to concerns about approaching darkness and the imminent arrival of Ottoman reinforcements. This defeat was a significant setback for the British, coming just a few weeks before the even more decisive loss at the Second Battle of Gaza in April 1917. Context, the First World War was a global conflict that engulfed Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and parts of Asia. The war saw two opposing coalitions, the Allies and the Central Powers, clash in battles that would leave millions dead and wounded. In the Middle East, the British were fighting to expand their influence and control, hoping to secure vital territories like Palestine. Historical significance, the First Battle of Gaza was a turning point in the war, highlighting the strength and determination of the Ottoman forces. It also marked a crucial moment in the history of the Middle East, as the British failure to capture Gaza delayed their progress towards Palestine and ultimately impacted the region's political landscape. The battle is a reminder of the devastating consequences of war and the importance of understanding the complexities of conflict in the region. Narrative The sun was setting on the horizon as the British troops advanced towards Gaza, their footsteps echoing in the desert landscape. They had been marching for days, their spirits high, their determination unwavering. The Ottoman forces, well entrenched in the town, were ready to defend their territory at all costs. As the British troops approached, the Ottoman guns opened fire, and the sound of artillery filled the air. The British fought bravely, but they were outnumbered and outgunned. As the day wore on, it became clear that they would not be able to capture Gaza. With darkness falling and Ottoman reinforcements on the way, the British were forced to retreat, leaving behind their fallen comrades in a battlefield strewn with the bodies of the dead and wounded. The defeat was a harsh blow to the British, but it only strengthened their resolve to continue fighting for control of Palestine. The First Battle of Gaza was a brutal reminder of the realities of war and the sacrifices made by those who fought for their countries and their beliefs. The year is 1351. On the news, combat of the 30, 30 Breton knights call out and defeat 30 English knights. In a dramatic turn of events, 30 Breton knights have emerged victorious in a combat against 30 English knights. This highly anticipated battle, known as the Combat of the Thirty, took place on March 26, 1351, amidst the Breton War of Succession. The war was fought to determine who would rule the Duchy of Brittany, a medieval feudal state located in northwestern Europe. The combat was an arranged fight between selected combatants from both sides of the conflict, and it was fought at a site midway between the Breton castles of Jocelyn and Plarmel. The challenge was issued by Jean de Beaumanoir, a captain of Charles of Blois, who was supported by King Philip VI of France, to Robert Bimborough, a captain of Jean de Montfort, who was supported by Edward III of England. The historical significance of this event cannot be overstated. The combat of the Thirty marked a turning point in the Breton War of Succession, as it demonstrated the strength and bravery of the Breton knights and their ability to defend their territory against foreign invaders. This event not only showcased the martial prowess of the Bretons but also highlighted their determination to maintain their independence and sovereignty. The combat of the Thirty also underscored the complex political dynamics at play in medieval Europe. The conflict was not just a localized struggle for power but was also influenced by the broader geopolitical tensions between France and England. 
The fact that the Breton knights were able to defeat their English counterparts despite being outnumbered and facing a more powerful enemy speaks to their exceptional courage and fighting spirit. In conclusion, the combat of the Thirty was a pivotal moment in the history of medieval Europe, showcasing the bravery and determination of the Breton knights and highlighting the complex political landscape of the time. It is a testament to the enduring spirit of the people of Brittany and their unwavering commitment to defending their homeland against all odds. Our selected holiday for today, Prince Kuhio Day, Hawaii, United States. Prince Kuhio Day is an official holiday in the state of Hawaii I, celebrated annually on March 26, to honor the birth of Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalani Anna Ol. Prince Kuhio was a prominent figure in Hawaiian history, known for his role as an heir to the throne of the Kingdom of Hawaii I, Prince of the House of Kalakau, and later territorial delegate to the United States Congress. The holiday was established in 1949 by the legislature of the Territory of Hawaii, and it has since become an important day to commemorate the prince's contributions to the state and its rich cultural heritage. Cultural Significance Prince Kuhio Day holds great cultural significance for the people of Hawaii I, as it serves as a reminder of the state's unique history and heritage. The holiday is a celebration of the prince's life and legacy, which embodies the spirit of aloha and the values of Hawaiian culture. It is a day to reflect on the important role that Prince Kuhio played in shaping the state's future, and to honor his contributions to the community. The holiday also highlights the cultural diversity of Hawaii I, which is a blend of Native Hawaiian, American, and other cultures. It is a time for people to come together and celebrate the state's rich history and traditions, and to recognize the importance of preserving and honoring its cultural heritage. In addition, Prince Kuhio Day is an opportunity to educate people about the history of Hawaii I and the significance of the prince's role in it. It is a chance to learn about the state's royal past, its struggle for independence, and its eventual annexation into the United States. The holiday serves as a reminder of the state's unique journey and its cultural identity, which sets it apart from the rest of the country. Overall, Prince Kuhio Day is a celebration of Hawaii I's rich cultural heritage and a tribute to the prince's contributions to the state. It is a day to embrace the spirit of aloha and to come together in recognition of the state's unique history and traditions. On this day, in 1909, Hector José Campora, former president of Argentina, d. 1980, was born. Hector José Campora was a significant figure in Argentine politics during the 20th century. As a dentist by trade, he rose to prominence within the Peronist movement and became a key player in the political landscape of his country. Campora's dedication to his political beliefs and his ability to mobilize support from the working class and youth made him a formidable force in Argentine politics. In 1973, Campora was elected president of Argentina, a position he held for a brief period before stepping down to allow Juan Perón, the former president and leader of the Peronist movement, to run for office. Despite his short tenure as president, Campora's impact on Argentine politics was significant. He implemented policies aimed at improving the lives of workers and the poor, and his administration played a crucial role in the return of Perón from exile. Campora's legacy extends beyond his political achievements. He was a champion of social justice and workers' rights, and his commitment to these causes inspired a generation of young people to become involved in politics. The modern left-wing Peronist political youth organization La Campora, named after him, continues to be a powerful force in Argentine politics today. Throughout his life, Campora faced numerous challenges and controversies, but he remained steadfast in his beliefs and his commitment to the people of Argentina. His contributions to his country's political landscape are undeniable, and his legacy continues to be felt today. In conclusion, Hector José Campora was a complex and influential figure in Argentine politics. His dedication to social justice, workers' rights, and his unwavering commitment to his political beliefs make him a significant historical figure. His impact on Argentine politics continues to be felt today, and his legacy serves as a reminder of the power of political engagement and the importance of fighting for what one believes in. We remember the life of Nicky Sutton, English singer-songwriter and guitarist, born 1956, who died on this date in 2006. Nicky Sutton, born Adrian Nicholas Godfrey, was a highly influential English singer-songwriter and guitarist. 
best known for his work with the post-punk band Swell Maps, which he co-founded with his brother Epic Soundtracks, Sudden's career spanned multiple decades and genres. Born in 1956, Sudden grew up in Soli Hall, where he attended Soli Hall School and began his musical journey. With a passion for music from an early age, he honed his craft and eventually formed Swell Maps in the late 1970s. The band quickly gained a following for their unique blend of punk and post-punk sounds, and their debut album, A Trip to the Coast, was released in 1980. Throughout the 1980s, Sudden continued to work with Swell Maps, releasing several more albums and touring extensively. He also began to pursue a solo career, releasing his debut solo album, The Bible Belt, in 1983. This album marked a departure from the raw, punk sound of Swell Maps, and showcased Sudden's ability to blend different styles and create a more polished, introspective sound. In the 1990s, Sudden continued to experiment with different genres, incorporating elements of blues, folk, and country into his music. He also collaborated with other artists, including members of the Velvet Underground and the Jesus and Mary Chain. Despite his prolific output and dedicated fan base, Sudden's life was cut tragically short. He died in 2006, at the age of 49, due to an accidental drug overdose. Despite his untimely death, Nicky Sutton's legacy lives on through his music. His unique blend of styles and his ability to blur the lines between punk, post-punk, and alternative rock have influenced countless musicians and continue to inspire new generations of artists. His contributions to the music world are immeasurable, and his music remains a testament to his talent and dedication. In conclusion, Nicky Sutton was a true original, a talented musician who left an indelible mark on the music world. His passion, creativity, and dedication to his craft are an inspiration to all who knew him and to those who continue to discover his music. His legacy will live on, and his music will continue to be enjoyed by fans for years to come. This was Today in History, an AI podcast. Brought to you by Decor Studios. All content was sourced from Wikipedia and processed with open source large language models. This podcast is released under Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 International License. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you tomorrow.